Welcome back to this program. We're about midway through, so let's continue. Only two months after a return to democratic rule, Bangladesh's new government faces its toughest test yet. A two-day mutiny by paramilitary soldiers ended last week, but it raised new doubts about the ability of this impoverished country to stay on a democratic course and to achieve long-term stability. <laughs> As a member of the general public and of civil society, that it, uh, it was necessary for us to express uh, our sorrow in a public way, as well as to uh, to, to mourn and, and, and to show that this is a national sentiment. Last Sunday, a candlelight vigil was held just opposite the gates of the headquarters of the Bangladeshi Rifles. Just two days before, it was the scene of a bloody mutiny. Angry over pay and command structure, the BDR forces staged an armed rebellion and opened fire on their superior officers. The BDR forces have long-standing complaints that their pay hasn't kept pace with the salaries of soldiers in the army. Although they carry out a similar mission to the armies, they are just an armed force. They are traditionally commandeered by officers drawn from the military so they have no opportunities for promotion. Another grievance is believed to be the BDR's exclusion from UN peacekeeping missions, which could bring additional pay. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina immediately persuaded the guards to surrender with promises of an amnesty coupled with threats of military force. Nobody can compensate this loss or destruction, but I don't want that any more destruction should happen in order to take revenge. I request you all to maintain patience, maintain peace for the sake of the betterment of the nation. As army troops moved in, the mutineers gave up, bringing an end to the 33-hour mutiny. At least 80 people were killed, mostly army officers. And then the real horror was revealed. Bodies were found in mass graves or in sewers. So far, the bodies of 56 officers have been found and seven are still missing. The body of my brother is not here. His name is Major Musara. The mutiny has raised questions about the stability of Bangladesh. Whether Hasina can balance the benefits between the army and the BDR or not will determine the country's fate in the months ahead. The army plays a pivotal role in Bangladesh. If not satisfied with the punishment for the mutineers, it might move unilaterally to administer what it views as proper justice. Or it might take power, claiming the government is unable to maintain law and order. That has already happened about two dozen times in Bangladesh's 38-year history of political turbulence. In 1975, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, father of the incumbent prime minister, also the first head of the state, was assassinated in a military coup. So Hasina is taking careful measures to deal with this crisis. With many of his officers among the dead, the army might resist the amnesty and push for the legal penalty for mutiny, death by hanging. The government has said those directly responsible for the mutiny will not fall under the amnesty. Bangladeshi police have charged more than 1,000 BDR men with murder and arson. A man has been arrested as the mutiny's mastermind. Hasina has done all this to calm the army. In January 2009, Sheikh Hasina was sworn in as Prime Minister after a landslide election. My priorities will include ensuring law and order and bringing prices down. That ended two years of rule by a military-backed interim government, bringing hopes of economic progress and political stability. 
But the BDR mutiny, one of the bloodiest episodes in Bangladesh's violent history, does not speak well for the government's administration. If disappointments on the economic front were to follow soon, it might rejuvenate an opposition and spark mass protests and strikes. Such a situation has made it difficult for past governments and provided rationales for military intervention. The military's public acts and statements so far suggest it's willing to give Hasina time to prove she's serious about punishing the mutineers. But at the same time, the BDR's demands also need to be considered. India shares over 4,000 kilometers of border with Bangladesh. The BDR forces are mainly responsible for guarding it. To ensure national security, Asina may have to give the BDR at least some concessions related to pay and benefits. If she can balance the benefits of the two sides, that would leave Hasina free to concentrate on economic and political reform. Bangladesh is one of the world's poorest countries. Over 40% of the population live below the poverty line. And the global financial crisis has badly hit Bangladesh's export-oriented economy. A healthy economy is the basis of a stable society. If Bangladesh cannot create a good environment to develop its economy, it will be very hard to achieve the social stability and to fulfill the promise to raise the salaries of the BDR. That would leave a significant risk of conflict in the country. Despite an uncertain future, some Bangladeshis refuse to give up. It is possible for us to overcome this and that at the end we can still be optimistic, no matter what. But optimism isn't enough. Without a sound economy, political stability is just an illusion. Well, Bangladesh's finance minister says the mutiny will take a toll on the country's economy, intensifying the impact of the global recession. Bangladesh is running out of options. What's needed now is decisive action and enough time for it to succeed if the country is to survive.